It's showtime. Hello and welcome to Musical Lyrical Lingo. We're your hosts, Tim and LJ. Today and every week, we will be talking musicals and specifically what they taught us. Lauren, this what? is your twelve-minute call. You've got twelve <laughs> minutes. I love it. Episode twelve. Like what? They still love us. What fun we are having. That's it. Like mm. that's it. We're having so much fun. It's so good. This is a busy week this week, isn't it? Yeah, really busy um, week. At, at the time of recording, I've listened to so many podcasts where they say that, and I've actually oh, really? been able to say that for real now myself. I love it. At time of recording, this is show week, isn't it? Yeah, it is show week. So the stage girl that all our ridiculously funny and embarrassing stories have come from um, is having their end of yeah. year showcase this week. Yeah. It's lovely to see you in and about. I know. And you know what? This is so, like, fun. I'm so, I, I'm so glad I'm there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. Do you know what? I think it's, I feel like it's nice that people want me around. Yeah. <laughs> um, not just as, like, a parent, but it's just nice to be there. And um, but, the stage school means so yeah. much to a lot of us. Yeah. Like, it really, really does. But I just have such a special... It just holds such a special spot yeah. in my heart. And I think, both kids are involved in that. Yeah, that's it. You Both your kids are involved and you're helping with costumes and the general run-on of things. But I think you're right. I think the connection that you have with it probably makes it even yeah. more special. Yeah, I think it's really lovely. And it's nice for the likes of me who ha- hasn't gone anywhere you know, to see the likes of you guys, like, mm-hmm. coming in. It's like, oh, there's my wee crew. Like, the, there's the originals back and forth. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. no, it really I cute. hope it goes well. Oh, it will. <laughs> Do you know, I was looking after the babies, and they were like, and who are you? And I was explaining who I was. Yeah. And then I was like, but did you know that I used to go mm. here? And I was like... Timothy and because um, I'm still the only one that calls you Timothy. Yeah, so. there's not many people call me but, Timothy. Um, so I was like Timothy and SJ, and um, I went to say Auntie Jillian because that's mm-hmm. what I call her. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I'm Auntie Kiki, but I was like, so um, Jillian and Kiki. I said Kiki's my sister, and I said, but um, Timothy, SJ, and Jillian are my best friends, no. and I became best friends with them here, no. and they were like, oh really? It's so cute. That's it. Friends for life. So cute. So that's why that's the power of drama, isn't it? It makes friends for life. Yeah, but also just something special about that place. Yeah, the one hundred percent. But yeah, show week, and it's all going to be great, and it's all going to be wonderful, and yeah, looking forward. And actually, um, the musical we're looking at this week has really close um, roots and memories to um, stage school as well for us, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's probably. Where I was first introduced. Well, yeah. Me too. M- mainly sort of knew about it, yeah. Yeah, me too. No, definitely. But Shall we let the listeners yeah. into the secret? So we're not in Spain. No, um, and I hope it's still nice and warm and sunny <laughs> at, at this time of recording. <laughs> but no, we're not in Spain. We're yeah. still very much at home. But the rain in Spain often is about... <laughs> In this musical, that's rubbish. Um, do you want to just tell them, Lauren? <laughs> okay, that's right for I'm nervous, okay? I have a lot going on this week, okay? <laughs> that was, you know, like one of those batteries just like lost its bar. <laughs> you were like all like, all really enthusiastic and then you just like, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, get fell, off, I it. fell off the, the edge of the cliff there, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. No. I um, crashed and burned. <laughs> yes, uh, this week's musical is My Fair Lady. Yes, My Fair Lady. Uh, the wonderful my oh really? Oh, oh she's just pulled a funny face. I know, but that I makes me think I she doesn't sure. like it. Just to share about your face. We need there. to stop doing this, like choosing musicals that um we're not that fussed on. Um my relationship with it is complicated. Yeah, I would we'll say maybe that get too. into that. I would I, I'm <laughs> gonna say that too. Okay. It's yeah. complicated. Right. It's complicated. 
Do you want to know a bit about it? Please. So any listeners who maybe haven't heard of My Fair Lady before, it's that elegant rags to riches story. Don't we love a rags to riches story though? Fuck, everybody does. Yeah, it's the rags to riches story of a cockney flower girl who literally tucks her way into the upper crust. Yep. Yeah. So it's based actually on the 1912 play Pygmalion by uh, George Bernard Shaw. And I remember I did go, it's very hard when you know My Fair Lady to then go and see a play of oh, okay. Pygmalion because then I'm like, uh, where's the song? Uh-huh. Where's the song? There yeah. should, should be a song in there. Um, and it's by, uh, it comes from lyricist Le- Lerner and composer Lowe's fantastic work. It's probably their biggest hit, I would say. Um, it's basically a story of Eliza Doodle, who is too uncouth to be employed in an actual flower shop. So therefore, she's forced to sell her small bouquets to passers-by uh, on the streets. And that's where she meets Professor Henry Higgins and his friend Colonel Pickering, who enjoy discussing her accent, ac- accent, accent. <laughs> Oh, Lordy Days, if I make it through this podcast in one piece, we're doing well. Um, uh, yeah, so they're, they're kind of more, in, those men are more interested in her accent rather than her as a human being. Uh, they see her as merely an object that may perhaps be improved upon. Henry Higgins is into his elocution and um, speaking properly, and he thinks he could fool anyone into thinking that she is a lady. Uh, with only a few months of um, training in upper class diction and elec- uh, uh, elec- etiquette. Yeah. Yeah, etiquette. Yeah. So, bless me, Eliza Doolittle. She's treated very unfairly by them, to be quite honest with you. It wouldn't fly in today's society, no, I don't think. absolutely yeah. not. My Fair Lady was the winner, though, of six Tony Awards. See, that's yeah. a lot. Yeah, it, that was in 1956, including Best Musical. And it also won the Olivier Award for Best Musical Revival in 2002. Oh, okay. Yeah. That was so, a big revival, though, wasn't it? Yeah, it was pretty huge. Yeah. Um, uh, 1956 Broadway, it was a notable critical and popular success. So it made money, but it also was successful with the the punters, you know, and it recorded the longest run of any musical on Broadway up to that time. Oh, okay. And then it was quickly followed by the hit London production as well. Uh, Rex Harrison and Julie Andrews starred in both Broadway and um, West End productions. Oh, I didn't know Rex Harrison. As Henry Higgins and uh, Eliza Doolittle. But controversially, they oh. then made the 1964 film, which I suppose more people maybe yeah. are aware of yeah. the film rather than yeah. the musical productions yeah. because uh, Rex Harrison yes. reprised his role as uh, Higgins. However, the role of Eliza Doolittle went to Audrey Hepburn. I know. Which... Um, which was a bit of scandal at the time because a lot of theatre goers believed that Julie Andrews was perfect for the part. And of course she was, yeah. but she wasn't a big enough name. But yeah. that same year she then recorded Mary Poppins and became a huge I film know. star as well. So um, Warner Brothers m- mucked up there, especially when Audrey Hepburn's voice wasn't good enough for the singing role. Exactly. So she was vocally dubbed by Bar- Marnie Nixon. So Julie Andrews didn't get the role. She wasn't even asked to then D- dub, dub the yeah. voice. I However, know. if I was Julie Andrews and they'd asked me to do that, I'd, I'd have told them where to go, yeah, to be fair. Yeah, that. But I mean, so that's... Go. That must have been a kick in the teeth. Like. Awful, like totally awful. Especially when you were you were critical mm-hmm. and popular success when you were doing it on stage. And she is perfect for the role, like. And then you know, going on and doesn't Mary Poppins and yeah. Well, clearly Warner Brothers went. Oh, yeah. however, maybe not. I mean, the film was a good enough success, wasn't it? Audrey Hepburn was a huge star, so yeah. Maybe. I mean, uh, they probably didn't lose too much sleep. Probably. To be honest, probably, we're probably still, losing more sleep. Yeah, we're pro- yeah, <laughs> definitely. Don't you dare <laughs> wrong Julie Andrews. Who do you think you are? Warner Brothers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
So there you go. Shall we get on to this week's musical lyrical lingo then? Yes, we shall. I actually have quite a few. Amazing. I don't have a huge amount, so this is good. Yeah. So, um, obviously I spoke about it in mm, Oklahoma, um, but always for years was always singing in rain in Spain that the rain stays mainly on the plane and always thought it was a plane, like an aeroplane. Aeroplane, P-L-A-N-E, yeah. Like always. Yeah, and we've talked about, we have talked. Yeah, no, we talked about No, this. it was the plane, it was the same plane that you thought in it, Oklahoma. In Oklahoma, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So, um, but obviously this time made more sense that it would be yeah. in a plane. And did you come across those at the same time in your, your musical theatre career? Uh, uh, no, the because... The same year maybe? No. Or did you just make um, the same mistake twice? Um, yeah, I'm going to admit that I just made the same mistake <laughs> twice. And it was maybe only whenever I was researching for this podcast that I realised oh, that it wasn't stop a plane. It. No, I'm Oh, not. so you thought that it rained on the aeroplane? Oh, Lauren. No, I, th- did, I thought that it was being like facetious or funny like maybe that's not the right word um where like <laughs> there's no rain in spain because <coughs> the plane just takes all the rain from the clouds okay okay that makes sense though mm-hmm. yep that's what i thought okay like that the as a plane is going to spain it passes through clouds and then the rain <laughs> falls inside the plane and you're digging the hole deeper. <laughs> That's so what I, I thought. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Fair. And it taught you in research for this <laughs> podcast. I think that could be the most up-to-date musical lyrical link we've had <laughs> in all 12 episodes. Yeah, so it's okay. actually a, fl- a flat land. I'm glad I asked you that question. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you can tell, um, <laughs> listeners, we don't plan this at all. That's hilarious. Because I don't think I would have thrown Lauren under the bus. No, you wouldn't Just have. so much if I had actually known that. Yeah. That was a recent... Okay, move on really quickly. Yeah, okay. Um, I learned that the gentle sex meant female. And okay, that's yeah, in yeah. the song A Little Bit of Luck. Yeah. Um. Oh, a little bit of luck is a horrendous song whenever you look at it. Aye. Like what it is saying. Uh, about women. About women. Actually, yeah. the whole musical. Like, we'll get into this. I like, agree. Absolutely rotten. Yeah. Um. So he talks about the gentle sex being a female. And then he also goes on about philandering. Mm-hmm. Which is when married men or you know, married people who philander frequently enter into casual sexual relationships. But with a little bit of luck, the wife won't find out. Yeah, it's it's so wrong, isn't oh. it? Yeah. Yeah, it's... um. Even just the way Higgins tries to change... Oh, everything, Eliza, everything, a, a everything. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. Um, then in the song, I'm an Ordinary Man. Uh-huh. Uh, it mentions Keats and Milton. Yes. So I'm not a massive poetry lover, but did poetry for um, English Lit. So yeah. would have been aware of these guys. But Keats was actually inspired by Milton. So that's why Keats and Milton are they uh, kind of go together. A dynamic too. Well, uh, no, they probably never worked together. No. But um, predecessors? Yeah. Could you say they were predecessors, maybe? Mm, not yeah. really. They're probably the same time, aren't they? Um, so a, a Milton... Uh, Probably a poem that you maybe would have heard of it is, it, or his most famous is Paradise Lost. Um, and a line from that is better to reign in hell than to serve in heaven. Ever heard that expression? Mm, yes, that? Yeah. kind of. Yeah, ish. so that's where that comes from. That okay. comes from a, a Milton poem. Um, and then Keats did all of those like Ode to okay, poems. Yeah. So, like, I think his are uh, mostly romantic. Um, <laughs> and uh, most yeah, mostly romantic, and his most famous was "Ode to a Grecian Urn," where it talks about that close relationship between art, beauty, and truth. And does that ring a bell? Art, beauty, and truth. Is I that mean, in Milan Rouge? Yeah. <gasps> yes. I can't believe I got that. I know. No, no. This is just like this is one hundred percent out of Lauren's brain. I am like, <laughs> well, that is pretty much Milan Rouge. Yeah, it's like, in a nutshell, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So, and because. Keats was mostly romantic poetry. I'm yeah. wondering, is that, has there... Is there a, was that stimulus like a nod? for... Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, well, they, that would have, those poems would have come before Merlin yeah. Rouge. So oh, was that uh, maybe yeah. source material at some point yeah, for so, the storyline or something? Um, Amazing. Uh, yeah, and I, I just kind of was like, oh, that's another, like, 
even though my Fair Lady and Moonlight Rose are nothing connected, but I'm like, oh, that's interesting yeah. that we've managed, well, I've managed to find a connection. Well done, Lauren. You have revived yourself I know from after. the plane and the plane. <laughs> <laughs> um, also in I'm an Ordinary Man isn't it it's not the really long song I'm an Ordinary Man he talks about a sabbatical yeah um, I never knew what that was but I learned it from that about a period of leave yeah. and then in Just You Wait it taught me that if you go swimming for a long period of time you'll get a cramp so I didn't understand yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know that yeah. Um, so yours are those are excellent musical lyrical lingos this year this year oh oh my goodness it's time for me to go home (laughs) and (laughs) a brazen hussy yes yeah Um, a woman who wants to attract sexual Mm -hmm. attraction attention that's it Um, yeah so so one of my musical lyrical lingos also comes from Ordinary Man because okay. controversial, but it's one of my favourite songs in, in the musical. Okay. And it's not normally a, one of the songs that people would pick out no, as memorable. Do people sometimes cut that? Or or shorten it. Shorten it? Okay, yeah, it yeah. Thing, yeah. But I kind of think it's a, like it's almost like a soliloquy mm-hmm. for Higgins. So I think for him and character development... It's important, yeah. to be honest. Okay. Only if you've got a Higgins worth is dose and salt. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Because if your Higgins is rubbish, cut, yeah. cut the tripe out of the song. Do yeah. you know what I mean? But he sings about, um, she'll be a large Wager- Wagnerian woman. Or, sorry. She'll be a large Wagnerian mother with a voice that shatters glass. So he, he's talking oh, basically okay. about women like yeah. Eliza yeah. when she arrives on his doorstep like yeah. talking all cockney and rhyme and slang and all the rest of it and it basically refers to big powerful domineering women okay and um, uh, Wagner sorry Vag- Wagnerian mother mm-hmm. that's what it is um, it re- also refers to uh, Wagner the composer yeah mm-hmm who's, um, I think he did operas and stuff, yes. and they tended to be of a massive scale and dramatic and of real emotional intensity. So he's describing his women like, you know, a, a Wagner's mm-hmm. opera or the women that you would, which is um, a bit like what we said earlier, how he speaks or yeah. talks about women is not very nice. It kind of gave me, uh, also taught me a few lessons of elocution. Oh, okay. And a few of the rhymes that he had Eliza doing when he was trying to improve her speech. So we've already talked about your favourite one. Mm-hmm. The rain mm-hmm. in Spain stays mainly in the plain, like the aeroplane, mm-hmm. isn't that right? Yeah, that's it. Um, I also love in Hartford, Hereford and Hampshire, Hurricanes hardly happen. Yep. And then there's bits where he makes her put marbles in in her uh, mouth and do them, which I think is a very funny scene because she then swallows one of the Mm -hmm. marbles, doesn't she? Um, I didn't really know very much about horse racing or the fact that there's this annual event um, at Ascot every year and there's a musical number, I think it's called the Ascot Gavotte, isn't Mm -hmm. it? Where they're basically, it's her. I think it's her fi- first outing. It is having taken lessons with Higgins, where he kind of takes her to see how she gets on amongst the in public upper crust of yeah. society. Um, um. So I didn't really know that that was a thing. That was an event mm-hmm. until I came across this musical. Um, I love that scene though because she gets so excited. With the um, race that she she gets carried away and she loses all elocution that she's learned or etiquette. And she's like, come on, Diver, move your blooming arse. Love it. Um, I also love the bit where he takes Eliza to... Some, most of my lyrics are from scenes, actually, rather okay. than the songs. Yeah. Um, he takes her to visit his mother. Mm-hmm. To see how she gets on at, you know, afternoon tea with, with Mama. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she's talking about uh, her, I think it's her aunt, who's recently died. And she's basically accusing he, her uncle of basically yeah. dr- giving her drink and, you know. And she talks about, um, she came to a sudden... Uh, she came so sudden that she bit off, uh, bit the bowl off the spoon, and I didn't know that the you know the bit at the end of a spoon is actually called the bowl, oh, the bowl of the spoon. 
okay. So I didn't know that. I was like, bowl, spoon, but they're two separate things. Oh, very good. But yeah, so that wee bit at the end of the spoon is called the bowl. Here, that's good She bit She bit the bowl off the spoon. Yeah, and that's, uh, yeah. Oh, and then show me, she sings about... Is that all you blighters can do? Yeah. And blighters, I didn't know, was a person who is regarded with contempt, yeah. irritation, or pity. Yeah. That's I, a good word, that. Let me turn my page. I think I might have one more. Just pull out this, um, your, the, the number you don't like. Uh, get me to the church in time. Oh, yeah. He sings, pull out the stopper. Let's have a whopper. I didn't realise that um, it kind of made make every possible effort. Like, pull out the stopper means... Make every effort to hmm. to then have a whopper, which is have a good, have you know, have a good. Party See, I always thought night. that was pull out the stopper, as in what you put, yeah, for like champagne or something. Yeah, yeah. it could be. It could be like a double, then you're gonna double have, meaning. Yeah, have a good time. Yeah. Well, have a whopper. I kind of understood that, but the pull out the yeah, stopper. Yeah, I know. Was, I just thought. I thought no, that that makes more sense. I mean. We were never singing the right words. In... Well, we've, we've established this in, in previous <laughs> ep, um, episodes. Yes. Yeah, definitely. So, is that our musical Eric Lingos for this week? What about our memories then? Okay. So, in our dance trip... <laughs> <laughs> Have we mentioned our dance trip? I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, we, My Fair Lady was one of our little sequences. Yeah, we sets that we rocked out in yeah. the... And how did it start? Homes. How did it start? Um, is it was it not every joke and L uh, and Pia is here? Is here. Everyone, Everyone who should be here is here. Uh, is which is as got Kavot. Yes, positively dashing. So that was another thing. Well, the songs were all out of order. Yes, that's true. So whenever you, I actually came to watch, I was like, "That doesn't get along there." <laughs> yeah. Not realizing that yeah. we were doing it. Yes. It also, was we had a load of, of fun. Songs, just was not doing that. You know, we used to. We were always really well behaved. Yeah. But that yeah. song, we, we always, it was like, yeah, yeah who could... Duh, duh. But I always <laughs> got confused at the end of the phrase as to whether it was... Um, um, what is smashing, positively dashing? Was it spectacle or moment? Moment at the escort or oh, spectacle, was, the escort opening? I was going to say spectacle, but that's what would yeah. naturally came but right there. But every time I would have gone to do it my brain had a brain fart moment and I was always like moment uh, spectacle <laughs> and then you almost words. had a mixture yeah. of the two words yeah. glued together do you know what I mean and then you went <laughs> <laughs> as you walked off yeah which <laughs> yeah it just yeah, yeah and then somebody came out and sang oh on the street where you live yeah no, was no, it? No, because that would have been you, so you wouldn't have done a U-turn. Oh, was it into uh, Just You White and Reagan's yeah. Just You White? Um, I remember oh. I had to come out shouting, Eliza, you're nothing but a heartless gutter snipe. Oh, yeah, maybe that was it. Just You, you White. And you did that? Mm-mm, I did it. I was like, cover. Cover. Whenever. First cover, ladies and gentlemen. I was first gentlemen. cover. <laughs> It was the only thing I could do. <laughs> Shut up, that's rubbish. <laughs> yeah, and, and that was always fun. Again, it was much shorter, but mm. you'll be sorry, but your tears will be too light. It was yeah. really like... Yeah, you're right. We could we could have a bit of little. fun. Um, I think also it was, one, it was one of the sections that didn't have very much dance in it. So yes. it was literally just a sing and like act yeah. through song kind of one. So... It was relatively easy in comparison to maybe some of the other sections yeah. that we had to do where you were like kicking your knees up high for like 25 minutes. Do you know what I mean? And it was, it was more like, you know, we all came on to the first number and then somebody did one song and then you did a song and then, you know, so you were, you weren't really on the stage, you know, a yeah. lot of them you were on and doing a dance and then somebody moved forward. Yeah. There's a lot of just a solo yeah, sort of yeah, going yeah, on. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was, it was, it was chill. It was nice and yeah. chill. Um, I remember it's where I first learned to roll my R's. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, rushing faces. Flushing. Yeah. So I, I learned to roll my R's. I also, and I still have a bit of trauma from it because um, I always got told off because I wasn't saying the word can't properly. Oh, yeah. So, because I was one of like three boys in stage school back in the day, like 
I basically was Henry Higgins. So yeah. anything that required like a a line into a song that was delivered. You're just by, all the male parts. <laughs> yeah, it was just all the male parts, to be fair. Yeah, I didn't have a cover. <laughs> if I was sick, they were stuffed. Um, and I had to come on. Um, oh, it was my song. He, we, sat, we did um, Why Can't the English yeah. Teach Their Children How to Speak, which is a song that Henry Higgins does. But I kept saying... I thought I was saying it properly, like I thought I was saying can't yeah. um, in an English accent, but I kept being told off that it was can't. Yeah. C- why can't, why can't, can't. rather yeah. than why can't. Yeah. I thought can't was good enough, yeah. but it's not. No, and it, it sounds was, so wrong every it, time you say it. it. Maybe that's why they kept telling me off. <laughs> Why can't the English? Is yeah. that better? Yeah, Is that's that better? better. It's like dragging yeah. that A out. Why can't the yeah. English? Okay, see, I still am not very good at it. Oh. I'll never play a Higgins. No. I yeah, the, but there was I'd definitely a lot of those lines that we w- never got right. But again, we weren't ever given yeah. the lyrics. We were just told, just learn that. And you were just singing whatever. Yeah. I think we made up the harmonies too, to yeah. with a little bit of luck, didn't we? Oh, yeah. We we were really naughty with our whips and... Sh- oh, we, yeah. 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 Um, I do, I've mentioned this in previous podcasts. I did go and see it in yes. Royal Theatre Jury Lane. Lane. Yeah. And that was the time of Martine McCutcheon. Um, and anybody who doesn't know her, she was like quite a well-known actress in one of the big like serial drama soaps yeah. here. And she, I think she had just finished. She had been, well, she was killed off. I think she had literally just been killed off. And like a couple of months later, she appeared on stage. I didn't, you know, nobody yeah. even knew she had that side to her. Do you know what I mean? She was very good, but she was very far away. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I, do you know what? I didn't like it as a kid. But I've grown to appreciate it as an adult. Okay. Um, I think it's quite good if you've got two really good leads. Like if you're if you're Eliza, and your Higgins are really good. I do you know what I think it's an actor's dream. Like you know, I think because it's based on a play. Yeah. So there, you can tell you know, and there is a lot of. Um, acting, like a- a- yeah, acting in it. there's a lot of dialogue in it. It's um, dialogue heavy, isn't it? And it, yeah, th- I suppose they are quite a good duo, you know, mm. but I was opposite. I loved it as a kid and absolutely hate it now. Really? Yeah, I just... What did you love oh, about it as a kid then? I think I enjoyed just those songs that we did on our dance trip and yeah. then I quite, I, I think I quite enjoyed the story and I thought it was like a... Like a rags to riches, like Cinderella finds her person. Mm-hmm. Like, but it's oh so, gosh. So, uh, so do you dislike it now because you have a bit of disdain for the plot and yeah, how I Eliza's so. treated as yeah, a woman? Yeah, I think I don't. Okay. I don't like how Eliza's treated. I don't like how women are spoke about. Yeah, like it's so degrading. Yeah. Um. I. I. It's the only time I think, and I think, do you think I remember whenever I was younger being like, why is she, why did she go back to Higgins? Like, why yeah. would she not marry him? He's young and the same age as her. Yeah, and- so, yeah, there's, but this is, it's interesting you should bring up this other he. Mm-hmm. So it's Freddie Einsford Hill, isn't yeah. it? Who would be a younger, you know, a younger male, like, supporting character. But he is so supporting that it's, it's, pointless having them yeah. in my opinion oh like, yeah I agree it's with such that an, like it's almost like they realised oh hold on a minute we need to have a love interest or something um, and then they throw him in but there's no depth to the character well, in my opinion yeah. there's no depth to it he appears in one or two scenes and we're supposed to believe that there might be this romantic connection between Eliza and him mm-hmm. you know and then when she doesn't go off with yeah. um, Freddie because he also meets her and then um, the next thing he's does he propose to her? Or am oh, I uh, yeah, he's in yeah. Love, yeah, he's like totally. And I'm like, in okay, love. calm down, Mitch. You've only met yeah. her. Um, yeah. Do you think there was a romantic? So, do you think what Henry Higgins and Eliza has is a romance? I think it grows into that. Yeah, for both of them. Yes, I do. 
I think that that is developed. And I, I totally agree with you about the Freddie thing. But I think that's why whenever I was younger, I wanted her to go off with Freddie because mm-hmm. I was like, why would you just have this character here? I think he would have had more depth to him if they end up together because yeah, then there would be a yeah. point to him and a purpose and he was there um, as she would never have met him yes. if Higgins didn't do the work. And that I think I could have believed more. And then that maybe would have... You know, if you had had, if that had happened, you could have had Higgins, you know, crumbling and yes. realizing what he, you know, by the way he treated her, he lost yes. her. Yes. Maybe. And that doesn't, like, because I just sometimes wonder, he does have that lovely song at the very end where you kind of think, oh, he realizes the error like of his I've ways. Like I've grown accustomed to her. Yeah. Yes. But. Do, would he, will he learn his? You yeah. know, will he learn the error of his ways, or has it just all worked out for him, and that she returns to him? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. You see, the last production of it I saw, the two that played it were so good. Uh-huh. I was so captivated by it that it was it, it was a quite a. I didn't feel the way I normally would right, feel, okay. which I kind of like, no, Higgins didn't get us come up and he hasn't yeah. learned anything from this process. But I didn't feel that in the last production because oh, okay. I think just the chemistry between, between the two actors was so good that when she did return and he's sitting in his, his yeah. chair, isn't he, listening to the recordings of his voice over his megaphone or what record player and she, unbeknownst to him, turns it off and yes. she then presents the... The recording, the recording, but live. Yeah. yeah. And I went, oh, she's come back, uh-huh. which is not like me normally when I would watch it. But then he does turn around and go, Eliza, uh-huh. where the, with Blooming yeah. Heck are my slippers. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, okay, you're yeah. a prat who's yeah. like nothing. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, no, I, uh, I, um, I maybe, maybe I have to see some really good people in it or a really different yeah. production or something. But yeah, I, I agree with you. You could c- completely cut Freddie out. Yeah. It's not going to change anything. But actually, if you wanted to change the production in a way, have Eliza and Freddie end up together and have Higgins... On his own. On his own. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think I wrote, actually, it's all a bit gross. It's kind <laughs> of like a bit of a... Like, if, if it ended like that, it would be similar to Phantom. In a way, wouldn't it? Yeah. And the phantom's left on his own at, when she goes off with Raul. Yeah. Raul. But I've got more, like, phantoms and more loving, lovable character, I suppose, mm. than Higgins. Yeah, I just, I, I, yeah, I struggle with the... Redeeming qualities of Higgins uh, are hard to find. Yeah, I think so. I think he's so, like, on a mission and there's not enough of that... Redeeming college, not enough of him going, I've made a mistake or actually I've fallen in love with this person and it doesn't yeah. matter what way she speaks or yeah. looks or where she's come from or anything like that. A bit like how um, Prince Charming is in Cinderella, you know, he yeah. like finds out that she's, you know, the maid and he's like, oh, well, I don't care. We, yeah. we fell in love. We had yeah. a connection. Yeah. And there's more to it. There's than more just... to it than just, you know, class. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, because even when, like, Eliza does a good job, you know, like, she, she's done her lesson, she's practiced, and she, you know, he takes her to the, because he tests her a couple of times, mm-hmm. like, he meets them, you know, she, she goes to ask, her, all right, it's a bit of a disaster, that one, but then she, he takes her to a ball, mm-hmm. doesn't, doesn't he? And he takes her to meet his mother, and she does really well towards, you know, the more events she goes to, she actually does really well, and he never even really gives her, the credit, it's almost like tough love or like a tough teacher. Yeah, and, I, and then you're like, why does she go back to him? It's a bit like yeah. that, like falling in love with your captive, your captor. Yeah. Is that right? It's like, weird, it's, isn't it? Yeah. It's only as an adult when you just start to break down. And yeah, and I think that that's what it is. It's not just him, it's like her dad, you know, on that I'm getting married in the morning yeah. and... And with a little bit of luck and all of those, I'm like, oh, the way you're talking about it. Yeah, Ooh. but it's like so many of those older musicals, like they, so many of them have like an element to them where in today's society, it's almost not acceptable. Yeah. You yeah. know, like if that, if that musical was to be written now yeah. as a brand new, never seen before, like I think people would 
have something to say about it because yeah. of the of how Eliza's treated. It's a bit like the same with South Pacific. Like mm-hmm. really, Nelly in South Pacific is a bit of a bit racist, yeah. really, with yeah. regards to her, her. You know, when he finds out he has chil- children who had a Polynesian, isn't it Polynesian? Polynesian, yeah. uh, Polynesian mother, you know, her reaction to that is racist, mm-hmm. but yet they still end up together. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, it's weird. Yeah, I think it is. It's all. And it probably poses the question of like, should those musicals be done anymore? And funny, actually, I think there's a, a slight hint, nod to that in the first series of Schmigadoon. Oh, right. Okay. Um, about you don't see me in these musicals, you know? Um, yeah. so it's quite interesting. And yes, I did have a baby out of wedlock and with, you know, this person, yeah. you know, it's, yeah. um, yeah, I think, I think you just have to be careful. Um, if you were doing these now, I think be respectful <laughs> of 2023 eyes or something. I, I don't know. See, yeah, I'm a bit conflicted because I kind of think they're classics mm-hmm. and they were written, they weren't written now. Yeah. You know, they were written of a, of a age, you know, so I mean, if you were to say, oh, no, you couldn't do that now because of this, or you couldn't do that now because of this, you wouldn't be able to do any of those yeah, classics. Oh, no, no, yeah. You know I'm, I mean? I, I'm not saying that. I just mean, I I, I think it's good to learn, yeah. you know, and I'm just yeah. glad that, like, if somebody was going to do that now, you would like to think that they're not going to be. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I think, I just don't think it's right that they get together. I'm, it's in my brain. I can't think of it. Do you know Jane Eyre? Yeah. And Jane Eyre ends up falling in love with the older man yeah you know i love that yeah 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 but this i'm like nah yeah <laughs> nah you see I, yeah i think yeah, i agree with you like it, it i don't think you'd a musical would be written with those kind of undertones yeah. now but i think i think you still you know i think we have to have a bit of understanding that they were written of a time and that doesn't mean you can't perform them no i have no. more of an issue with you know produ- doing productions of older musicals now where a, a race or I a agree. nationality i agree is the is like the main plot yeah line do you know the or the storyline you know you know either how you know uh a nationality has been treated or whatever yeah. and not performing it with yeah. people of that nationality yeah. or that. Um, it's like if you were to do hairspray and it just be all white faces. Yeah. You can't yeah, yeah, yeah. do hairspray with all no. white faces. Yeah. And you can try and be as creative as you want, but at the end of the day, that, that inequality yeah. is such, you know, racial inequality yeah. is such a big plot. Yeah. You couldn't write it out of hairspray, yeah. so don't do it unless yes. you have the yeah. right, yeah, you know, nationalities or you know, yeah. No, I agree. Race I agree. involved. I agree. Yeah. And no, I, I'm certainly not saying like not do My Fair Lady or no. don't do any musical like that that maybe does have some questionable. I just I'm like I now that I've re looked at it. I'm not a fan of it. You wouldn't be rushing to it. I anyway. wouldn't. I yeah, wouldn't. Fair. But um, I certainly, if there was a you know, if, if you went to see it and you said, no, actually, these people are great and um, the way they go and watch it, give it a go, I'd go, mm. okay. But I wouldn't be rushing to it. Yeah, but it's such a it. classic, isn't it? Like, I know. It's, you know. But then is it because the film is such a classic with the, mm. the dress, the iconic dress, the costumes? Well, it was known. I think that was one of the biggest things. It was, you know, My Fair Lady featured, like, beautiful costumes brought by Cecile Beaton. Um and I think the costumes were a massive part of it, yeah. especially that um, Ascot Cabot, oh, where it was all black and white, like super stunning. Yeah, and you know. Audrey Hepburn is like meant to be one of the most beautiful ladies ever. Yeah, you know. So I think I that, still think Julie Andrews would have been there. I, I I I agree. I agree. Yeah. Um, but she's so iconic, you know, mm. especially even like Breakfast at Tiffany's and yeah. all of those, yeah. um, that she ends up being in. Yeah. So is it more that that holds up than actually the musical itself? Is it more that My Fair Lady is remembered for the visuals, the visuals than the story and the music? Yeah, maybe in, from the film. Although I mean, it's still being revived. It was revived recently. 
Um, and then I thought it was it was in the London Coliseum, I think, for a season. And then I think it went the same production went out on a UK tour, mm-hmm. but I don't think it got great reviews. Right. Okay. Um, I didn't see it myself, so I, yeah. I don't know. It, it went to Dublin. I don't think it came to Belfast. Okay. But yeah. But it's yeah. an interesting one. Do you yeah. have any standing ovations I for don't. it? No, I don't. you don't. It's not even worth a standing ovation. No, I can, no, I don't think that. It my my, is. my rolling R's were worth a standing ovation. Oh yeah, they were. Rushing. I do you know what? I I do like some songs. Mm-hmm. And I think it I I'm a bit weird in that you see in a cast recording that's overplayed Mm -hmm. or, you know, the big songs are over familiar because you've just heard them all your whole lifetime. Mm -hmm. Um, I almost like avoid them now. And it's the more non-descript or the lesser known ones that kind of grasp me because they're a bit fresher. Yeah. I think I've mentioned, I I think a few of my stand ovations have been a bit like that in previous. So I do like Ordinary Man that Higgins sings and I do love I've Grown Accustomed to Your Face. Like if it's done properly, it's like, wow. Um, There, I remember growing up there, Cameron McIntosh, which is a huge, he's Mm -hmm. a huge musical theatre producer. Going back to our last episode talking about producers, he... There was like a birthday celebration evening of mm-hmm. all of his yeah. like productions that he had produced called Hey Mr. Producer. <laughs> yeah. I watched that recently actually. Did you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, do you have it on DVD? Yeah. Oh, I'll have to borrow it because yeah. I, so this is how old mine was. It was VHS oh, tape. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that I only had it on tape and, and never got it on the, on the DVD. Um, and I would remember watching it as a kid. Over and over and over again, and two two performances of the whole night stand out, and I'll never forget them. And I go back and watch the, mm-hmm. those performances on YouTube every so often. One of them is Judy Dench, who I just love and adore, singing "Send in the Clouds." Oh, it's wonderful. It's yeah. just sublime. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other one is Jonathan Price. Oh singing, yes, I've grown accustomed to your face. Yeah, and I think. They're just so amazing because they're two phenomenal actors. Neither have like outstandingly groundbreaking like singing voices. No, I agree with you. Yeah, but they're the acting they do through both of those songs is just like wow. And I wow. prefer Jonathan Price as Higgins than Rex. Yes. Because for me, maybe whenever I was younger, I felt like he was really old mm-hmm. or something. Um, I don't know, but um, he's too, like, uh, busy or something and, like, dismissive. Who, and, Rex? Yeah, Rex. Mm. That's just how, how I feel, how, how he portrays it. Um, while I do feel a bit more sympathy and I feel like... Um, there maybe is that change of character with you, jo- with Jonathan. You're one hundred percent right. Mm. I think that is the thing. Rex is harsh from start to finish, yeah. and I think you're right. Jonathan um, Price is harsh, yeah. but you do see him mellow, yeah. And I probably would think he has fallen for yeah. Eliza. I've never thought of that actually. Mm. Rex is really harsh, yeah. I don't see and any change. Horrible yeah. and not likable. No. Whereas, yeah, especially in that rendition of yeah. Jonathan Price's rendition of "I've Grown Accustomed to uh, Her Face," you you do you're like, oh, you you screwed that one up, mate. And no. I think that's where the very last line, like, "Oh, Eliza, go get me my slippers." Yeah, that can be played in two ways. But yes. Rex plays it as in slave go get yeah. my slippers yeah. while I think if it was maybe Jonathan or somebody else it, yeah. you know it could, it could be anybody um, if it's more like done in a jokey way or yeah. with you know like or with a wink. relief that she's back Eliza yeah where the bloody hell am I you know yeah, something like I that it would be oh actually then maybe. you could be like oh well they are meant to be together then yeah while I just don't like yeah just don't like that but, and that sh- just shows you how an actor can literally change You're right. or your a opinion or a director can yeah. change your opinion. That's true. Um, about anything. And I suppose a lot of what we talked about, we probably can't blame the musical. We have to blame the source material, which yeah. is Pygmalion. And that's the way the character yeah. was written, <laughs> true. were written, to be fair. 
True. So we've maybe given my fair lady a hard time. And in yeah. fact, it's all the place fault. I know. Yeah. Give me a musical any day. See, that's the thing. Oh. Well, do you know, that was fun. That was interesting. It went It went to places I didn't think it would go, actually. Oh. That was a much... A much more rounded discussion, yeah. I think. I think we're getting mature. Would you, I would hope so. <laughs> I would hope we are. Um, on to next week. I think we both have been really silly and forgotten to think of a clue for next week. Do you know what? Um, I think let we me have. just check what next. Oh, I know. We're getting our tap shoes out next week, aren't we? <gasps> Did you forget what we were doing next? I forgot. Yeah. Oh, my tap shoes will be on. <laughs> they will be tied tight. Yeah. I will be getting the dimes ready. Yeah, it's it's also the, sh- the show that broke my back. Literally, but more of that next okay. week. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah. Love, love, love. Get love, out your tap love. shoes, Lauren. Yeah. Anyway, until next week, we tap off into the sunset. Bye. Bye.